I am, it's Sunday morning. So for breakfast, <laughs> I'm gonna make this spicy orange cake from the New York Times. I'll put a picture on screen. Um, it, I'm doing a couple subs just because of what I have on hand. I don't wanna run out to the store. Um, I am using fresh ginger instead of ground ginger. The substitute is one teaspoon to every quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. So I think I need about two tablespoons of chopped fresh ginger. Um, I could only find blood oranges, so I'm gonna use blood oranges instead of um, regular oranges. Uh, it is an olive oil cake versus butter. And I'm trying to cut down on, I have a cholesterol, issue so i'm <laughs> avoiding butter so this is perfect because it's going to be oil based instead of butter based um so yeah flour um sugar salt it has a little pepper which is interesting to me um also takes a little milk baking powder and baking soda the main spice besides ginger is cardamom but it gives you an option you could choose cardamom ginger or coriander i just really love cardamom so I'm going to use that. Um, and I figured since it calls for ginger or um, fennel as an option, I'm going to, um, it called for rum. I have rum, but I thought it might be fun to use ouzo instead because it is a fennel based, maybe a nice, but they both kind of taste like licorice. So I thought it would be fun to try that instead of rum. It just takes a little bit, a couple table tablespoons um, in the batter. So yeah, that is what I am going to make. And I will, um, so, so basically this is super simple. It, it gets baked in a loaf pan and then you glaze it. I've already buttered the pan, even though it's nonstick. So this is a Pullman style pan that's supposed to be nonstick without you having to do any greasing, but I decided to grease it anyway. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, it's super simple. You put the dry ingredients in one bowl, the wet ingredients in another, and then you mix it together, not over stirring, and then just pour it into the pan, and then it bakes for an hour at 375, I think, or 350. And uh, yeah, comes out, cools, you glaze it, and that's, you've got breakfast or whatever, a snack, tea, cake, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm, Excited to try this. Welcome. I'm so happy to see you and so glad that you could be here today with me. My name is Shannon and this is my YouTube channel, Whiskey and Wool, uh, where I talk about my knitting projects and my spinning projects and a little bit about my life and what's happening, um, things that are going on and all of that. Um, I am coming to you from Northern New Jersey. Did I say my name is Shannon? My name is Shannon. I hope you're not hearing. I live in a 
urban neighborhood just outside of New York City, uh, right on the Hudson River um, in a gorgeous location. And you're probably hearing a little bit of sirens right now. Um, who knows what the heck is going on out there? <laughs> oh. Definitely fire trucks. Um, okay. So yeah, welcome, welcome. I am going to talk to you today about knitting and there's a little bit of lifestyle stuff that I usually throw in. Um, I know I made a cake recently and uh, oh my goodness, I really wanna talk about diet stuff, not dieting, but like food. Can we talk about that? Can I talk about that right now? <laughs> Before I get into knitting and what I'm wearing and all of that. So I had a blood test and I tested for high cholesterol um, for the second year in a row. The first year, last year when it happened to me, I pinpointed that I was eating eggs every day and um, that raised, for all through the pandemic, I ate eggs, two eggs every day and the recommended is two a week. So I cut those out and I expected this year, I talked to my doctor about it, and I expected this year, no problem, I'm gonna be fine because I pinpointed the problem, right? Well, I didn't. Um, I still have high cholesterol, although it isn't as high as it was. It wasn't, I'm borderline high, but I was really, I'm just really, really confused. Like, I don't know if this happens to you, if it's happened to any of you or people that you know, but um, my, uh, my diet is mostly vegetarian. <laughs> um, sorry, there must be something big happening out there. Hope you're not hearing the sirens. I'll try to get them out anyway. Um, my, I'm most, I mostly eat vegetarian. I have meat one or tw once or twice a month, and I don't even eat red meat. I eat, you know, chicken. When I say meat, I mean chicken. Um, but I do eat dairy so now I have eliminated most of the dairy <laughs> from my diet including butter um, so I'm pretty sure I put the cake clip in At the beginning the cake was an olive oil cake instead of a cake made with butter um, so yeah it's hard it's a struggle so the my struggle with so it means really becoming more vegan than vegetarian and my struggle with vegan is that it's hard to make stuff <laughs> like <laughs> there's very few things that you can make because I can't eat any of the processed foods I I have um, a condition a, a GI gastrointestinal condition that um, does not react well to anything chemically processed. So most of the vegan things that sort of taste like dairy or like meat are chemically processed. So I cannot eat any of those. So yeah, it's been, I've, it's been about a month now since I got that diagnosis and it's been pretty, uh, it's been very head scratching. Like I'm doing a lot of like, oh my goodness, what am I, what am I going to eat? Um, so I'm eating a lot of beans and rice and nuts and of course, fruits and vegetables because I love those. But yeah, it's been a struggle. And it was, it's a bad time of year to try to <laughs> cut anything out of whatever you normally eat. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, anyway, <laughs> there's, that was a little bit of life stuff. Probably talk a little bit more about it later. Um, just looking for the yarns that, uh, my finished object is, so I finished my Rumble Raglan by Lydia Morrow. Um, I really, really love it. I've already worn it a couple times. Um, it really came out exactly the way I wanted in terms of like the negative ease working perfectly. Um, when I finished knitting it, I, um, I, I took a little, actually a little video clip. So when I finished knitting it before I blocked it, I videoed it and then I videoed it again after I blocked it. Um, it was the bust measured to 32 inches around or 16 inches flat and then uh, 21 inches long. So after I blocked it, it blocked out to be a 40 inch 
Um, bust, which is bang on, that means no ease, negative or positive. It's right on my bust measurement, which is like a 39 and a half to 40. Um, and I uh, got a little bit more length, so it grew to, to 22 inches in length from, um, and that's measuring from here, from the shoulder right at the, at the neckband um, down to the bottom. So yes, I it's perfect and I'm so excited, I'm so happy. I was a little um, apprehensive about the sleeves because they're really kind of loose, but I actually like it. I like that there's uh, some positive ease there because uh, I think it looks more like a t-shirt, which is kind of like the vibe of it, you know? It's a, it's a you know, t-shirt. And um, yeah, I don't, I'm not too gung-ho or, you know, excite. I don't get too excited about short sleeve knits because they're a little, it's hard to figure out when to wear them. But my thought with this was that, I actually was hoping that I would have enough yarn to make it to the, um, to like at least like elbow length sleeves, but this is all I have left. <laughs> of those colors so I was really right down to you know the bitter end I did have a little bit more of the um, speckle but the solids um, this is it <laughs> but I actually love that because this is three skeins out of my stash hooray <laughs> and this will go in my middle mini skein jar um, although it's not technically a mini skein, it is pretty much the size of one. I think it's like 25 grams. So I think I used about three quarters of a skein. This was the only full skein actually. And these were all, um, this one was uh, three quarters and these other ones were le less than that, like some, like around two thirds, I'd say. Um, so or maybe, maybe more like a half. This red one might've been a half. Um, all of these are La Bienname. Calcifer, Pinkyu, and Ichigo. Uh, La Mirame, Cashmerino. Um, technically, this is not Cashmerino. <laughs> this is a sport. It is from La Mirame. Um, but I went ahead and just used it anyway, and it worked out just fine. And the speckle is uh, Halloween Town. So it's a Halloween colorway from 2021. From... Um, Vita Lifestyle. She's a uh, indie dyer who is located in Staten Island, which is not too far from me. Um, yeah, it's drivable. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to drive over there. Uh, anything that has to do with city driving usually means that it's traffic and it's slow, even though the miles aren't many. So. Um, I did get a little bit of bleeding, I think, with the peach. Like, I was looking at it next to my swatch, and I think the peach did pick up some of the, I mean, the, the water, the um, soak water was really, really pink, really pink from, I don't know whether it was from one of these two colors for sure, um, either the, or maybe both, who knows. Um, so the peachy, the Ichigo did pick up a little bit of, um that die so unfortunately but it works it's still all good right and I'm sure by now I've put in a picture of myself wearing it uh, when I wore it to work one day this week I just um, I didn't really style I don't really style my knits I'm not I'm more of like a put on put on a pair of pants put on a top put on some shoes and go kind of person <laughs> like I don't I'm not I'm no uh, Jackie of Caddy Jack's knits at all um, when it comes to styling. So, but you know, as styled as I get. Um, yeah, so that is the Rumble Raglan. I am excited to make another one and I've already picked out the yarn. If you have been here for the last few episodes, when I was thinking about making this, I had two colorways laid out. So I do have that other um, set and I've already cast it on. So I'm gonna show you um, that. That'll be that'll be a fun one. So just put a pin in the Rumble Raglan for a moment while I show you my other finished object. Um, I also have finished my underwing mitts uh, by Erica Huser, I think is the way you say her name. Um, I haven't completely finished them. You are meant to, 
uh, duplicate stitch these lower white stitches are supposed to be du duplicate stitched with a color um, but I just opted to cast on a new cast <laughs> I was like okay either I'm gonna duplicate stitch or I'm gonna do a new cast on and I did a new cast on instead um, but yeah, I really love them. They're actually longer than I thought. I didn't think they would go down that far, but that's like far enough that my jacket sleeve will cover that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I used this soak that I got in an advent from a couple years ago, and it's really fragrant. Like these, when they were drying and laying out, they just oozed this scent and I don't even know what the scent is it smells good it's a it's a pleasant scent um but yeah I chose that soak because it has lanolin in it and I thought maybe um being that they were going to be uh worn quite a lot I you know and you know experiencing wear that perhaps a little extra oil in them would be good um, I still have that stripe. If you were here last time, I uh, this is a color dominance thing, um, and color dominance stems from your tension. So I knit with both hands when I'm doing continental or when I'm doing color work. So I'll have a strand in each hand, but I'm an English knitter, so my left hand is the weaker hand that doesn't have good tension. So I, I was knitting most of this uh, mitt, the right mitt, with the white in my left hand. And then I switched to, I switched the colors for this little stre stretch here because on this side there was a lot of black. Um, so when there are long rows, it's easier for me to use this needle that my right hand to catch the yarn then you know catch the color I'm not working with then my left hand so I switched for a few rows <laughs> and it still didn't come out in the soak and then I was careful I was like oh I didn't even realize like this happened to me like I know it's a thing but I didn't know it was something I had to worry about um, but then when I did my left mitt I um, I didn't, I made certain to not switch. I just kept the white as my, in my uh, left hand. So, but you know, whatever. Anyone who's gonna be looking at that is just looking too close. They're standing too close to me if they're seeing that. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna do the color. I, I'll see, I, I, may, I may try it. And um, I was counting, I was like, oh, it's all of like, basically like 20, stitches to duplicate stitch so it's not very many um but i do i do really like them just like this actually they're really cool looking and uh oh the yarn it's over there so i'm not going to show it to you on the skein but the yarn is green mountain spinnery um it's fingering white they're two ply fingering white and they're natural white and natural black and i have enough i bought enough think in 2016 or 17 to make a sweater that I never made um, and I have another sweater in mind um, and I think I'm gonna have that be my New Year's Eve cast on like my first sweater of 2024 that's the plan at the moment I've got to dig out the rest of the yarn because I only have a skein of each out right now so um, yeah so I'm excited for these to wear these these I I worked hard on these this week to get them done because it has been the weather to wear these and um, I because I love wearing half mitts for driving especially and my commute I commute to my job um, which is uh, west of here west of where I live I almost drive straight west um, out about 10 miles to uh, my job on um, a college campus I'm a call. I talked about this last time. I think I'm a college. I'm an academic, college professor, and administrator. I'm drinking seltzer, my usual, my usual daily drink. All right, getting moving on to my um, whips. I'm going to show you my continuing whips. I really thought I would finish this, but. Um, 
I, I did finish one. I think last time this was only partially done, but um, I am in pursuit of knitting socks for all of my um, my children and their spouses, partners, and uh, I. These, this is for one of my daughter-in-laws. And yeah, I don't think I finished this. I think I was working on the leg. I was probably like here last time. So I finished one sock. I've got the second one cast on. Um, I really, really want to be done knitting the socks by December 1st <laughs> because I, um, I have a 24 stripe sock advent and I want to knit that in the month of December. And I know like knitting one stripe a day isn't going to take me that long, but I was realizing that I need these needles. <laughs> um, but I still have two more pairs of socks to make for my family. So um, I think what I'm going to try to do is finish this sock up this weekend and um, up leading up to Thanksgiving week and then over Thanksgiving week, you know, Andrew Mowry does that sock challenge. I'm not going to make the, I don't think I'm going to make that sock that she's doing the tessellated socks. I do have yarn in my stash that I'd be able to make. And by the way, like the kits were $96, $96 to knit a pair of socks. Those are, those would be like the most expensive socks I, ha I have ever made if I were to have bought one of those kits. I don't know if you did, no shame if you did, like more power to you, but wow, things are getting expensive out there, you know? Um, yeah, so anyway, I have that yarn in my stash to make those. I checked it out. I looked, I did buy the pattern because she always launches her patterns at a discount because I do like it. And, um, but I don't think I'm going to do the challenge. What I was thinking I would do instead, this is the, oh, sorry, I forgot to say this is the DRK Everyday Sock Pattern, um, modified. It's kind of a hybrid between the bear paw sock that Andrea Maori made and also the um I, I code it as a bear paw it's a, it says it's a bear paw in my on my pattern page on my project page on Ravelry um and by the way details for all my projects will be down in the description box and also um on Ravelry my show notes are all on Ravelry too and linked if you go to Ravelry the link that I put in the box and you're on Ravelry um you can then find links in Ravelry that will take you out to other, you know, how to buy, how to purchase um, from your area, wherever you are, even global. Um, that's one of the nice things that Ravelry does. So anyway, this is a hybrid, um, and I say it's a hybrid because uh, the Bear Paw uses a U.S. size 4, and I'm using a 3 millimeter, which is a U.S. size 2.5 normally. Um, and the DRK Everyday, I think, uses a 1 or a 2 millimeter. I don't remember. Um, it's been a long time since I've made that pattern other than the way that I modify it. And I'm using DK weight yarn. Um, and I didn't tell you the yarn. The yarn is from Hedgehog Fibers, which I have not knit with in a long time. Um, it is her Merino DK. And it is the colorway Deep End. I think I named it something else <laughs> on my in my Ravelry. <laughs> I think I named it something like deep end of the pool. I don't know, something like that. I don't know what I was thinking. Or maybe I just picked up on someone else's, what someone else named theirs. And <sighs> anyway, yeah. So um, my Christmas socks that I got from Woolen and Nosh, it's really cool. I'll, I'll show it to you in Vlogmas. So if you're curious about it, I will be showing you in, in Vlogmas, um, probably on the first day, uh, what the kit looks like and stuff. So um, in that first week anyway. And um, I need these needles. I have <laughs> two sets and if I wanna do the socks two at a time, I need both sets. Yeah, I think I need to buy another set. So I'm gonna do that. I'll probably do that this week. Just buy another set of uh, three millimeters. So I have enough to both knit the gift socks and knit my Christmas socks, my Advent socks as well. Uh. Forget where I was going with all that. I said a whole bunch just now. 
yeah anyway these are moving along i do have the uh, modification notes if you are interested if you don't like the way the fabric that you get and you want a tighter fabric you want to knit on three millimeter the bear paw socks i do have the modifications on my project page i just i think i've i haven't because i would be you know stepping on andrea's copyright so all i've done is told you the cast on amount so you'd have to kind of figure it out from there like what to do um uh yeah <laughs> i'm happy to answer questions privately <laughs> uh, if you want to work, reach out that would be fine so yeah that is uh i should have these done next time actually i'm not even sure when i'm having another episode because after this is advent um is uh, vlogmas so i will be doing vlogmas i've done vlogmas several years in a row i don't think all the years that i've done vlogmas are available on youtube i hid some of them i had some copyright issues with the music the first time i did vlogmas it's really hard to find music that you can use that is uh not copyrighted and christmasy <laughs> it's pretty hard um so i yeah i had some issues with copyright so i just hid the whole my whole first year and i think i hid the next year too and then the other couple years might be available uh, I think this year what I'm going to do is a weekly vlog. I will be taking clips of Christmassy things that I do throughout the week and then putting them together in one video. Um, that'll be probably around 30 minutes. It would be my guess. The first one will probably be the longest because there'll be a lot to introduce and show. Um, and then after that they should get, um, you're going to see like, Vlog vlogmas tends to be kind of repetitive because we do things the same every day um but i'm gonna try to intersperse some stuff um i'm gonna go in to see some of the christmas sites in new york city and uh yes yeah, so i'll be happy to share that with you uh, as i go I'll just to give you some things to look forward to all right i have a whip that you saw last time this is a uh, stripey unicorn by hoi locatelli is that the front yes you're going to be so happy that i solved my i know i'm happy i solved that weird stitch problem that i was having in the front so there we go that's the front you can still see where the short rows turned around, but I don't have those big blobs there anymore. Uh, what I figured out was that my stitches were a little loose. So, and um, because she has you actually, um, you cut your yarn on the short rows. So I was able to pull these tighter and that showed me like, so I was about to block the freaking thing and just see if the, if the, big loose stitches that were in there last episode if I could make them go away and so I just started to kind of pull a little bit and I found that um, it was just loose stitches on both sides so I just did a little tugging and tightening of those stitches and now I think it looks I think it looks as good as it gets like given what it is um, I mean they're short rows and a stripe <laughs> so what are you gonna do and I, from what I saw on other people's projects, this is what pretty much everyone's looks like, ends up looking like. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, Stripey Unicorn. I am like five rows away from separating for the sleeves. I think this pattern, it wasn't really clear to me like it is right now, uh, now that I'm in the position where I am like five rows from the bottom of the oak um I think it's like pretty oversized up here up through here and then I think we do decreases <laughs> to kind of bring the body back in which is interesting it's a shape that you don't often see in women's sweaters but you'd see it in men's but you wouldn't often see like darts going down the front of the body for a woman um so did i say this by hohi locatelli hohi locatelli 
Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, interesting. I, I mean, I'm going to just go along for the ride, uh, this time around and, uh, should I decide to make another one, which I think I will, cause I do think I'm going to like the way it fits. I love the way it looks on other people. So I think I'm going to like it on me. Um, cause my body's not that different from other people's. Um, I, yeah, I, I think I'll just go along for the ride and see what happens, see how it all pans out. But man, it is a lot of freaking stitches right now. And it's also, there's, you're just, you know, I'm, you're doing these random increases. I mean, they're not random, like they're planned, but they're different every row. So it's hard to, like you're putting your, your increases in different places every single row that you're increasing and so that makes it that's why like there's all these stitch markers like all the way around because these are all the different places that we are doing um increases so yeah um but fun fun fabric i really do like the fabric uh that is being made here trying not to drop any stitches because i've done that a million times already with this because there's just so many on there i really need those stitch stoppers those um needle stoppers that would be good so yeah the uh yarn um you're meant to do this with a color changing yarn so i am using a spin cycle yarn called deep bump i'm actually almost done with my first skein so it's a um, kind of like a cg green to like teal green to gold um change color changing I've knit with this color before in using Dream State. This is dyed in the wool, the sport weight version. But you can get a good idea, I think, of the way the, here, the way the colors change. So you can see those hits of gold and stuff. Um, the thing with Spin Cycle though that I have found is that from skein to skein, the way the colors move, it's different. I know other people have found that too. And I am not into managing these colors at all. So I'm just knitting whatever comes along. Um, so my next skein is quite different. There's a lot of gold in the next one, um, which whatever, I like gold, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> my other color, my solid color, is from is a is British sport from Le Garçon in the colorway Edith's Butler. I didn't know this. I had to look it up, but Edith Butler is a folk art folk singer, a folk singer in Canada, Canadian folk singer. So yeah, Le Garçon sport. And it is a blend of BFL and Masham. I want to say it's 7525, but the writing is so tiny, I cannot see it. But if I could get it to focus, I would be able to read my screen because it's much bigger. Hey there. There we go. You can read it now, too. <laughs> Yeah, 7525. Oh, it's really, really scrumptious yarn. Um, at some point, I'm going to get some of their DK or other weights to try because I think they'd be really, really awesome. So, yeah, so uh, I'm in that slog territory. Like I said, five rows. No, it's actually more than five rows. I have about seven rows um, to get from... <laughs> to get through the yoke increases. Ah, okay. More on that to come. So I have um, two new cast-ons. I'm going to show you the, the one that I'm most obsessed with first. I got out my Christmas bags too. This is from, I love Fat Squirrel uh, Fibers project bags. I just love the whimsical prints that she picks. And um, I mean, she's just wonderful if you don't already watch her. I enjoy her podcast quite a bit. Um, I think like, yeah, I think she just like, she's got such a knack and she's so, so awesome of a business per person to um, to work with. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute when I show you the next project bag. Um, 
Yeah, so I just cast this on yesterday and I am freaking obsessed with it. This is the Crescendo blouse by Knit Pearl Girl. The Knit, I think it's the Knit Pearl Girl. Don't know her real name. I will certainly learn it though, I think in the coming weeks. Um, that would actually be the center right there, the front. But what it is, is a lace yoke, round, a round yoke um, sweater that is a lace pattern and yeah and then you do you can pick your your sleeves um and i think i'm gonna do what she did on her cover picture which i probably already put on which is kind of like a three-quarter sleeve that's got some fullness in it i think that'll be really pretty um i did do i did do a modification already i um well i did two mods i guess technically one was that I did not get gauge. So this is a, I think it's written for a DK weight yarn. She actually holds together a strand of mohair and a strand of fingering weight maybe. I think that's what's in the, the pattern, the way the pattern's written. Anyway, I'm using fingering weight and some um, Labiana May. So fingering weight, this is my fingering weight. It is a um, peachy colored speckled yarn with some cool lime green, not cool, cool toned, but cool like I like it. <laughs> lime green speckles along with some dark rusty colored speckles. Um, it's a yarn I've had in my stash I think since 2018 or so, 2019 maybe from Olan. Olan who, you know, does she or doesn't she have a business anymore? I think she still has a business. Um, I'm a huge fan though, so I'm not trying to take a jab at her. Um, I do really love her, the way she, so it's called Obelisk. Color name is there. And um, Sock Light in 80-20 blend. Um, not trying to take a jab at her at all. I, I, I love everything she does. And, um, I think she, she thought she was going to go out of business and then she, um, she just kind of went dark. Her business went dark for a little while and now it's back again and on a very small scale. Um, but anyway, I've had this in my stash for quite some time. And the funny thing about this yarn is that I bought one skein Whatever year I bought it, either 2018 or 2019, I think it was 2018, I bought one skein as a mystery in a mystery pack because I didn't have any, I didn't have a big stash at that time and I just was looking for, you know, I often cannot decide what color I want. So I'm like, I'll just do the mystery bag. So I did like a mystery bag, plus they're a little less expensive. And I got one skein and then a few months later, she had a sale and I was flipping through and I realized that uh, the, the mystery skein wasn't one of a kind. It was labeled O-O-A-K, which one of a kind. Um, she'd ha she had this in her stash or in her sale, this color again, and it was named. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that goes with the skein I already have. So I bought one um, so that I would have two skeins and I could do something like, I don't know what I was thinking um, at that point in time, but I was like, all right, I could do more than like a one skein project. It would give me, it would give me more flexibility. Um, and they matched pretty well, like bang on. <laughs> like one is a little bit, like this one is a little bit more darkly speckled than the other one but that you'd get that in in any like even if you bought two skeins from the same dye lot that would happen um my other color is by Labiana may it is floral magnite magnite floral wait i feel like i'm saying that wrong well, let me look at the way kumo so it is her kumo base and it is floral Morganite, that's what it is, floral morganite. It's a color I've long admired and have wanted to um, pick up at some point. And I, 
you know, I was thinking about it and I was thinking about this yarn that I have. I just got this. This is a new stash acquisition. Um, I bought four skeins of it. And I, um, I was thinking about pairing it with this because although, you know, this is a fine color on its own, I don't like colors that are too close to my skin tone. I just, and I feel like this is a little, even, you know, even with the speckles, like this is just too flesh tone for me. Like it just matches my tone. Even though I know it looks good on me, it doesn't appeal to me for that reason. So I was like, I need to punch it up a bit. So I was thinking like, oh, it'd be fun to punch it up a bit and make this pattern, make this crescendo blouse with it. And yeah, so I bought the Kumo with that in mind, but as I was placing the order, she had a sale. So um, Amy of La Bienname had a sale. I only buy from her when she has sales. <laughs> so she was having a 20% off sale. Um, so as I was purchasing it, I was like, maybe I should get some Felix and see how you know maybe see how that goes and in the same color and then you know if i don't decide not to use it so i bought felix in the same color if i decide not to use it for that i will um use it for something else so i bought enough felix in the same color as the kumo to make the crescendo blouse and then I was like, uh, is it too bright? So I swatched and I put it on Instagram. I swatched both together in a big old swatch and I asked everyone what they thought would work for me. And I was really torn. I really love the, the bright on bright, but I was worried it was gonna be a little too bright for me and that maybe I wouldn't reach for it to wear. I would love knitting it, but, um, and you know, I really wanted to use up the speckle, so it was really interesting. Almost everyone, there was only one outlier who went for this. Mostly everyone was like, oh, you should do the speckle. Definitely do the speckle. And I was like, okay, yeah, because I want to use up some of these older skeins that have been hanging around in my stash for such a long time. So I was really, really happy um, about that. Oh, and the Felix I ended up buying, I did look for her full skeins. Felix is a lace weight. A full skein is about 700 yards. I would have needed a skein and a half. Um, she had, when the sale opened, and I got on the website within a few minutes of the sale opening, uh, there, she only had two skeins of it, and I put them in my cart, and by the time I got to check out, they were gone. And I literally, like, got the Como, got the Kumo, got the Kumo, got the Felix, went to check out, and they were like, nope, that's gone. So I, w I still had the Kumo, so I went back to the mini skeins, and I ended up buying mini skeins instead. So they are, um, they were, they're a little more money, but I was able to get closer to the yardage that I needed because these are about a little less than 200 yards, about 180 yards um, per mini skein. And I bought six of them. So I have enough, I think I have like, what does that work out to, right? I bought six, one, two, three, four. Yes, I bought six of them. Um, so that worked out to be about a thousand yards, right? A little bit over a thousand yards, so a sweater's quantity in lace weight though. Um, or enough to do like a stripe or something, or you know, color work, of course, if I held two strands together for a fingering weight, whatever. I'll figure it out. Like I'm happy to have that in my stash. That's a I don't have a lot of solids in my stash, so they're really great to have a solid um, in my in my stash. And I actually will have an extra skein of the Kumo as well. Um, so that could be some fun color work or something. Okay, back to the sweater and mods I made. Um, I did a single layer collar. The pattern calls for a double collar where you knit for three inches and then fold it. So I opted not to do that because one of the things that I noticed in the pictures and stuff was that the collar set up like kind of like instead of sitting on your neck like the way this one like down here it was like sitting up here and it kind of looked like a separate band and I didn't like that look and I knew I knew that 
that could be avoided with a double band by just making sure that when you're do knitting that band together on itself that you do it very loosely. Um, but I just thought, you know what, I that's not important to me and I, I don't need to I don't need to do that. So I decided not to do that. The other modification was that I, that I made was a modification for gauge. Um, again, it's a DK weight pattern. I think she recommends a US size 7 needle, which is a 4.5, right? Or is that a 4.25? I can't remember. A set, so a US 7 needle. And the gauge is like 23 stitches per four inches and I was looking at that going there's no way I am not going to get that gauge my gauge is going to be somewhere in the upper teens and um it's not going to happen so I did not even swatch with a seven I went right to a six so this first band here is a US six and then I switched to five a US five and then I switched to then I changed the yarn. So the, this is all in a US 5 because when I saw the fabric, I was like, this is as tight as I wanna go. I don't want the fabric to be any tighter. Um, so I don't know who you knitters are that can do a size, can do <laughs> 20 something stitches per four inches on that big of a needle, but it's not me. Even using size five, I'm still at 18 stitches for four inches. So um, to compensate for my big gauge, I am doing the first size, size eight. Um, and I'm still gonna get like a 48 inch chest, um, 48 inch finished chest, which means I'm gonna have eight inches of positive ease, which is more than I like, but I think it's gonna work in this. And um, I think it'll, I'll be able to style it and make it look nice. Maybe I do a little tuck or something, I don't know but I love it. It is really, really addictive. It's very, very easy. It's very easy to follow pattern. Um, you can see all my stitch markers for all each repeat. I just put a stitch marker just so that I would um, be able to easily keep track of where I'm at without having to do much counting. Um, but, and it's just been, it's just been so fun. Really, really fun. And you do this um, diamond shape that you can, I think you can see here. You do the diamond shape for the first size, just two and a half times. I'm gonna try to do three full repeats because I like the way that looks. Um, I'll just have to see where I am at with the yoke depth by the when I get to the point where she says we should stop. So I think I'm probably gonna keep going. Even if the yoke depth is, to, is where I want it, I might continue the diamond on um, after we split like on the sleeve and stuff just to get a full repeat um, there are four full repeats in the pattern just depending on which size you're making and how deep you need your yoke to be um, so yeah that is uh, the crescendo blouse so far I'll, I'll let you know um, it's knitting up very fast because it's like basically knitting DK weight so um, who knows, that might surpass the stripy Unicorn, which is a fingering weight sweater. Um, I didn't really think about this. I was watching my friend Lorian on her one of her Instagram Lives. She does Instagram Lives frequently where she gives you updates on her knitting. And she was talking about that, about the sweater weight and how a fingering weight sweater that she was making took her a really long time. Um, and then I was like, oh yeah, I forget about that that like a DK weight sweater does go really fast. Um, I have a DK weight sweater I wanna make for my granddaughter for Christmas, um, which I'll be casting on soon. I actually have it all prepped and um, sitting by my couch, so I, which is where, where I'm looking, <laughs> so that I could um, uh, get cast it on at some point. But I did two cast on within a couple, like basically within 24 hours, I did two different cast ons. So I, um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm gonna cast it on until maybe next week. I just wanna move along, move forward with some of these other ones and mostly get past the yoke on that stripe unicorn. So I'm in mindless knitting mode mostly rather, aside from a couple um, decreased rows that I'll be doing from time to time. Uh, okay, 
doing pretty good on time. This is my second rumble raglan by Lydia Morrow. Um, and I had talked about this, like I said, a while back. Oh, before I show you this. So this is just the beginning. Um, I got another fat scroll bag. That's Christmas. This is like, this is like witchy Christmas and I just am here for it. It is so freaking awesome. It's got the snow globe, snowman and mushrooms and a Wiccan star and crystal jars and a goat. Yeah, I really love it. Um, what I was going to say about her awesome service was when this arrived, the hook here had busted and I couldn't use it. Um, I think it just bo broke in transit, just maybe got crushed or something or got hit the wrong way. And she whipped one up and sent it on out to me within like a 24 hour period. Um, so I just told her, I was like, is there any way I could like replace the hook? I was trying, I was like examining it, trying to figure out if I could do it myself. And she's like, don't even think about it. I am going to make you one and I'll send it right out. And she had the fabric and whipped it up and yeah, I'm in business. So yeah, my, uh, second, um, rumble raglan this one will be fun i am using uh, i'm doing it, the two color version i'm using as um the main color this hand spun that i made actually this is from olan fiber company um she did fiber she did a fiber club for a little while for i don't know maybe six months i did like a three i did a three month stint of it I think no four I think I got ended up with four braids so this was one of the braids she called it luxury fiber so there was I don't remember exactly what's in here but it'll be down in the description box I'm pretty sure there's like camel in it or alpaca or something but it is really really sparkly I think you can see it it's got a ton of sparkle and it's kind of like it reminds me of like the Grand Canyon or like the Southwest it's got all of these shades of like, I don't know, those rusty red canyons that are in our southwest of the U.S. Um, and then it's got some bits of this, these like teal greens. Um, it's it's really really beautiful, um, and it's a it's a good color for me. It's kind of it kind of leans towards those flesh tones a bit. Like it's pretty much kind of close to my skin tone. <laughs> which I don't love, but it's gonna look good on me, I guess. Um, but I'm putting in, I don't know how many of these I can hold up, but I am basically knitting in a whole bunch of mini skeins in these blue-green um, colors. I have seven of them. I actually pulled, when I did the video a while back, um, when I was exploring color options, I pulled like, I think I pulled about nine or 10 of them and I realized that I didn't need that many. So I'm gonna go in, in a gradation, a gradation of color. So I'm gonna start, I'm starting with this green, I'm gonna move to this and then into the turquoises in some way, shape or form, ending with the darkest at the end. Um, and I think I have a couple more skeins that take it even deeper at least one more maybe two so if I need them those will be available um gonna just wind this up while I talk so yeah I'm excited I just think these especially these turquoises are just gonna look so great with this rusty color and um as you know like from the fabric it's gonna be a lot like this she uh, so Lydia wrote the pattern actually to be just two colors and then she gives you the option of how to do three colors which is what I did for this and then I ended up with four colors because two of my colors I used as one and then I just alternated them so I started with the red and then I moved to the fuchsia but what you should do in a three color would be like this would this fuchsia would also be red or this red would also be fuchsia kind of thing um but the two color version is one where you don't do these repeats. So the repeat is like a 28 row re repeat and you do like 14 rows and then you change a color. So every 14 rows you change a color. Um, 
in the two color version, you she kind of leaves it up to you to do what you want. And I looked at some of the, most people did three color versions. Um, Cause there's a few hundred project pages on Ravelry. So I checked out those and um, there was a couple where people really kind of mixed up the repeats and they didn't, they weren't, they, they kind of figured out a mishmash of repeat and then repeated it again so that I don't know I just really loved it so I'm gonna play around with that and um, come up with some sort of like mathematical way to you know to do the repeat so it won't be random it's gonna be like kind of more of a mathematical formula because that's the way I roll <laughs> um, but yeah I'm excited to see how this uh, ends up. I'm actually in the short row shaping right now um, that this would be the front right here. Right there. So yeah, I'm in that section of um, putting in the short rows and then after that we start down the body. Um, but yeah, it knits pretty fast even though it's fingering weight. Um, it's just like whenever you're doing stripes except for the stripey unicorn. Whenever you're doing stripes, it just seems to be very potato chippy. Like you just want one, you just want to see more and more and more. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, but I, I actually thought like with all this sparkle and glitter and the sort of green and, and uh, peach tones, that might be like kind of a nice Christmas holiday-ish sweater to wear, even if it ends up being short sleeves. Although I am ho hoping to get to elbow length with um this one and we'll just see i'll see how it goes in terms of how much yarn i have left for that so um yeah and that is the end of my knitting i have a little bit of um why do i have a needle over here oh i know why i have a needle over here this is for this i have a 20 inch or 24 inch needle for um for that for that ramble rumble rumble raglan when it gets a little bit bigger um i have a little bit of spinning i did finish up the lobby in a may confetti spin that i was working on last um time i had one skein done and i finished all three so this is it together um i did a two ply and it's exactly the same roving that she uses for her, not exactly, I don't think, but similar to the roving that she uses for her confetti yarn in the gray color. And um, it's got a lot of these like neon pops in it. So you can see like there's some neon green and neon pink and yellow and um, that floral morganite is in there too. So um, I ended up with about 500 yards, which was a bummer because <laughs> I wanted a sweater's quantity. Um, but it, someone was pointing out that it would be a, enough for a vest probably. Um, and I, you know, it's gonna look great with this was what I was thinking. Like when, when I put that swatch out, when I put this swatch out and people were going for the speckle, I'm like, yay because then i can use this for this like maybe do this in some sort of combo um because i think that would be fun and then I, I would have to hold two strands together of this most likely um to make this may be fingering weight but that's fine so then i would have about roughly 500 yards of each color um so i don't know i'll figure it out i think about it think about what and look maybe look at patterns and see figure out what i can what i can do and, and if i do if i use both like if i use all 500 yards that's a sweater squant right there so that is uh definitely an option i may also another thing i've been thinking about is now that i have this color is like maybe bringing in one of these other colors the pink or the yellow um and doing like a three color thing I don't know because she so the this confetti yarn what she does and, and the fiber what she did is she gave the mill her mill ends or her ends like snips and stuff of um neon -y colors and then that got added to the roving and then um I spun it so that's why um 
that's actually why my yardage is not so good, even though, because those lumps of, those, you know, nubs of fiber, it was tough to draft them. And, but it's fine. Like, the yarn is really, really pretty, and it um, it's going to knit up beautifully, I think. I don't think this middle one, actually, I don't think I spun or I plied as tightly as I did the other two as I'm just looking at them, like criticizing my own. This one's great. This The plies on this is really beautiful. This one's a little loose. Got some thick and thin. This one's probably in the middle, I would say. Yeah, it's funny. We're not a machine. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. Um, and uh, I will see you in probably two weeks, just after the first of December, that first Saturday of December. I'm probably gonna post on Saturday or Sunday of you know every weekend throughout the month of December. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for being here and thanks for hanging out with me a little while and I look forward to seeing you all again soon and uh, I hope you are all well and safe and healthy and I hope um, the strife that we're experiencing globally isn't uh, getting you down too much um, or that at least if you find some bright spots and some things to uh, look forward to that will definitely help um, pull you through some of the tougher times at least that's what I find. So, um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye. It's been a little while since I've shared any house updates, but I wanted to just share with you what I've done with my entryway um, because I really like it. I am so happy with the way this came out. I was, it occurred to me a few weeks ago that I didn't have anywhere to keep by my door to keep my gloves and my hats that I, I just want to be able to grab them and go um, whenever I need them so I picked up a I think it's like a clothespin basket um, I just went on Amazon and searched for hanging baskets and I wanted one that was cloth not wicker because wicker attracts is an attractive spot for moths to nest in those clothes clothes eating moths so i don't have any wicker baskets in my house for that reason <laughs> um so i purchased these really cool hooks also um from amazon and i ended up like it was a pack of three so i just hung three of them and i have my my purse hanging here this is a hohi locatelli bag you might um, recognize it. I think it's the Santa Fe one. And I have my grocery bags on the other hook. Um, and you can see actually this is really right by the front door. Um, but this like narrow section here, the width of the molding is unused space. So I ended up just using that um, for these. I had previously had um, these hooks here. These are like these cool ninja stars that I had purchased for one of my son's bedrooms and he left them with me. He told me I could do whatever I like so I just hung those there. Um, this is a hat that I wear a lot when it rains. If I just have to run out for milk or you know something, go to the store locally. Um, and this is just another handbag. Uh, that I have here. So yeah, this is my little um, entryway. And I probably showed this before because I've had this for a while. This is my shoe storage um, box here and then place to put bills and stuff like that. And um, bowl for keys and headphones and sunglasses. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, uh, yeah that's my, um, my entryway. And I, I probably showed this before too, this shawl. I had this in my other apartment. Um, this is just a um, kind of, I didn't put that on very nicely, but just a, a hook, a series of hooks for shawls. And I have other um, grocery bags here as well. So, and these are my horrible closets that, this is my coat closet and storage, but it's not really set up nicely. So I'll show you that when that gets set up at some point. Um, 
just, I love this so much. It makes it look like a little room. It looks so cute.